Playing through the first mission in the latest Hitman made me think about the difference between a puzzle and a simulation. A puzzle is a challenge that has a straightforward solution, like a lock that needs you to find a key, or a maze that asks you to find the right path, or a math problem that has the right answer. In this case, I'm trying to get aboard a yacht, but if I walk in looking like a Hitman, everybody's going to run and call the guards. So I'm going to subdue this engineer, take his clothes, and walk in like I know what I'm doing. It's a straightforward lock and key puzzle. The engineers in the garage are like a locked door, and dressing in the right outfit is the key. There are a lot of games that work this way. Broken Age, Samarost, the whole adventure game genre are all about finding specific solutions to specific problems. There's no randomness or unpredictability to them. It's not about strategy or tactics. It's about looking at a problem and figuring out the right answer. Which is great, and those games are a lot of fun. The difficulty is, it's like learning a joke or a riddle. The first time, it's entertaining. But once you know the answer, there's not much point in hearing it again. On the other hand, you have a simulation. This is what you see in SimCity or Civilization, a set of systems that are reactive and unpredictable, so that each time you play, the challenge is different, and each choice you make spins the game off in a new direction. These games are eminently replayable. Each new XCOM game plays out differently from every one that went before. There's no solution I can memorize. I have to think strategically, react to new situations, and there's a constant give and take between me and the game. I impulsively decided to take this guard down, and now I set off an alert. The guards are coming for me, and I can't predict exactly what's going to happen. There are skills and strategies I can employ to do better or worse, but there isn't a single answer to this riddle. We're outside the realm of puzzles and solidly in a simulation. But in Hitman, the simulation is there to respond to failure. When you're playing the game optimally, this simulation is never engaged at all. It's like Groundhog Day. Everything plays out the same way every time, and your job is to solve the puzzle of killing your target without being discovered. Right now, I'm dealing with the consequences of making a mistake. If I played my cards right, I'd still be walking around the yacht with impunity, and these guards would still be on their patrols. So when it's working like a puzzle game, how does Hitman solve the problem of replayability? Remember, when you've already heard a joke once, you never need to hear it again. But I've played this level of Hitman dozens of times, and I'm still really enjoying it. This makes me think of the game Blockhood. It looks like a city simulator, but there's no actual simulation going on. You have some blocks that are resource producers, and other blocks that consume those resources. If you run out of resources, your city fails. It's essentially a math problem. I've played other city builders like this, and they were not very fun, because once you understand the math, the answers are obvious, and you don't have to think anymore. The problem is essentially solved. When you say that a simulation game is solved, that's a big deal. It means you've turned it into a puzzle and you're done with it. You might play around with it like a toy, but the challenge is gone, and it's lost the ability to engage your interest. But Blockhood does something clever. It has you build your city in three dimensions, and requires you to keep the entire thing navigable with elevators, stairs, and walkways. With the addition of that third dimension, the problem becomes too difficult to hold in your head all at once. You have to constantly reprocess what you're doing, instead of just solving it one time and doing it all by rote. Hitman takes place in a three-dimensional world, but it introduces several other dimensions to its puzzles. The first is time. The game world changes constantly, which means that different solutions and opportunities open up as time passes, and you have to navigate not just in three dimensions, but in four. Here I've set off a distraction for this guard. He'll walk over, check the generator, and then walk back. I have to time my movements to fit with his, and this is the simplest possible example. Most of the guards on this yacht are not going to be distracted. They're going to be walking around on patrol paths, and my route will need to thread its way through them. Another dimension is access. Remember how I had to change outfits twice to get out of the lower levels of the yacht? In my civilian clothes, I fit in on the party deck, but if I want to get up to the private levels, I need to either dress like a guard or use distractions to keep myself hidden. In the new Hitman, the world is also riddled with experts who see through different disguises, so it's not just a matter of wearing the right clothes in the right places. I also have to keep track of who can see me and where they're going to look next. So I'm solving a five-dimensional puzzle in my head as I play this game. I can't hold it all in there at once, so I have to simplify, focus on a single goal or a single route, and constantly reprocess what I'm doing to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. The other advantage Hitman has is its expressive solutions. At the end of the game, there are many questions you can ask yourself about how you completed the mission. Did I kill my target as the first one? But there's also, did anyone witness me? Did I wear any disguises? Did I kill anyone other than my target? Did it look like an accident? You can see here that I'm trying for the classic perfect kill. No witnesses, no disguises, no collateral damage, and no suspicion. But that was a choice I made. I could change or relax any of those rules, and they would suggest a different solution. 
The new Hitman explicitly offers you a huge list of different challenges with each mission, and each combination suggests a different strategy for attacking the puzzle. But it's more than that, because this is not just an abstract game. It's a game about murder, crime, innocence, things we all care about deeply in our actual lives. When I choose to avoid killing innocent people, that's a choice that has meaning. It says something about the kind of hitman that I am. When I choose to blend in with disguises, sneak around with stealth, or go in brazenly with guns drawn, those all say something about this person that I'm pretending to be. That's what I mean when I call these solutions expressive. Not only do I have a huge variety of options, but each one means something to me, and it gives me a chance to express an idea at the same time that I'm solving a problem. So while each Hitman mission is a puzzle, it's also much more than that. It's an infinite number of different puzzles layered on top of each other. And the game isn't just about finding the solution. It's about carving out my solution, and then finding another, and another, and never running out of possibilities. The makers of Hitman armed themselves with the tools of a puzzle game, and then challenged themselves to use those tools to create something that was as deep and replayable as a simulation. Much the way I just armed myself with a lockpick and a coin and then used those tools to take down my target without suspicion. There's something to be said for accomplishing a lot with very little. Thank you for being here.